coming out this morning and uh, nice fall weather following a, a really well attended Veterans Day parade yesterday. And I was real proud of Putnam County and the, not only was the parade long and very well, it was attended very well. So anyhow, it was good stuff. Okay, Commissioner Flagg, I think it's time, isn't it? We'll call this meeting to order Wednesday, November 12th, 2014, uh, Putnam County Board of Commissioners meeting. And we'll start with uh, Reverend John Isket from Faith Baptist Church here in Palatka. Good morning, sir. And then we'll follow with Tim Smith, our clerk of courts. Where is Tim? He's, he's well, John, you want to lead us in pledge this morning? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Everyone would stand. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. We're so thankful, Lord, for the great freedoms and blessings you've given us, not only in our country, but in Putnam County. Lord, I thank you for these dear servants and pray, Lord, that you would keep a hedge about them of protection and blessing. Please give them wisdom and guidance and help them be sensitive to it. Help them also know, Lord, that you love them in Christ and that uh, someday they'll be accountable to you for all that they do. I pray, Lord, you'd give them direction today as they make decisions, and I pray you'd keep, uh, continue to bless them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please join me with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice. Reverend John, thank you so much. And John, appreciate you being here this morning. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, <clears throat> commissioners, in front of you have the minutes from the October 28, 2014 meeting. I will entertain a motion. I move approval. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, I'm going to turn to our county administrator, uh, Mr. Rick Leary. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask uh, Mike Patterson to come forward, please, and uh, join the chairman at the podium. Uh, I have asked uh, Chief Patterson to uh, come and be in attendance this morning at the meeting in order that the uh, board may recognize him and congratulate him on uh, uh, being the recipient of a certificate from the uh, United States Fire Administration National Fire Academy. Uh, commemorating his receipt of a certificate uh, signifying his completion of the executive fire officer program. Uh, this is significant, I think, because it completes a four-year course of study that Mr. Patterson undertook on his own initiative. And uh, uh, as noted in a letter I received from Ms. Dr. Dennis O'Neill, who is the superintendent of the National Fire Academy, uh, Dr. O'Neill uh, states uh, that it is the testimony of your professional commitment to career development, organizational improvement, and a fire service at large uh, as he commends you for receiving this uh, certificate. So uh, we certainly applaud your achievement, Mr. Patterson, and uh, congratulate you. training a couple years ago they had a black ice storm and we stayed an extra week <laughs> you couldn't leave by plane bus or automobile or your feet <laughs> either way uh, Yvonne wants to get a, a photograph with us Mike but that's where Mike studied these uh, years smile Mike <laughs> <laughs> goosing Jim Of you, Mike. You like thank you, Mike. Thank you. Good. Just to thank the board and, and Mr. Larry, the best boss in the world, for letting putting up with my antics all these years. And that first trip on the way back, Mr. Larry and I sat together on the bus when we finally we were able to get out of there, and we just made jokes all the way back. <laughs> um, but um, it was um, that was. That was our first trip. Then I went four more times by train, and um, 
Um, it's um, it, it's not for uh, it's not for everybody. This uh, EFO executive fire officer is not for everybody. It's, but I'm sure glad I did it. But I want to thank I want to thank my um, partner Quinn Romay, Chief Romay, for putting up with me this last four years as well. But um, I just appreciate it. Thank you all. Well, Chief Patterson, thank you. Like Mr. Leary said, he was uh, not, it wasn't part of his duty. It was above and beyond. And uh, what he brings to the county can't be matched. And we thank you for that, Mike. Okay, next, uh, Linda Myers. I believe the podium's yours. Our tax collector. Good morning. Good morning. And how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to be here. Um, we're here to recognize two of uh, the employees of the Tax Collector's Office for their long-term service to Putnam County, and it just seems quite fitting that it follows the recognition of the longtime servants we have both in Mike Patterson and Quinn Romay. So I'm delighted to be part of this celebration of what they've brought over their years here. And in our office, we have two people we want to recognize today. Um, some of the things we do are simple, still, hard to do. It's hard to part with money sometimes, especially this time of year with the Christmas holidays. Some of the things we do are very complicated. And so having a face year after year that a citizen can come to and know it's friendly and knows it cares about finding the best answer for you is so very important. And those are the types of people we're recognizing today. With that, I always like to make sure that you the commissioners and staff, as well as the citizens watching and with us today, recognize the different members of our organization. So I'm going to invite um, Brenda Bridges, who is our operations director, to join me. And uh, she will be sharing with you some details about the two individuals. Ms. Bridges? Good morning, Ms. Bridges. Good morning. How are you this morning? Very well. Good. Thank Good. you for being here. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, we are here this morning to congratulate two of our employees for their outstanding and long service to Putnam County and serving the citizens here. Our first employee is Patsy Davis. She has been working with us for 20 years and began her career in 1994. She is a tax administration specialist dealing with tax deeds, tax payments, and all of those intricate things that are um, very difficult in our office. Patsy also is gonna be retiring in December, so we're gonna be losing her institutional knowledge. So um, not only do we congratulate Patsy today for her 20 years of service, but also for her upcoming retirement. And many of the people in Palatka will probably recognize Patsy as the Greyhound Lady. <laughs> Patsy spent 18 years working in the Greyhound Depot when Palatka had right. Greyhound service yep. here. So, Patsy, congratulations on your 20 years and your retirement. Thank you. I would also like to ask uh, Patsy's supervisors. Uh, Katie Robinson was Patsy's supervisor for many years and Rose Wilkinson to come up so we can get a photo with them as well. Brenda Patsy was actually my boss at that bus station. I was the one that unloaded the <laughs> bottoms of the bus, wasn't I, Patsy? She was mean, too. <laughs> she was mean. <laughs> Perhaps you needed that if direction. I if I wasn't quick enough, she let me know. <laughs> Congratulations, Patsy. Thank you. Thank you. Our second employee is Lavinia Williams. And if Patsy and Trish, if you'll go ahead and come up with Lavinia, um, Trish and Patsy are both supervisors in our office and have worked with Lavinia for many years. Lavinia is a uh, lead CSR in the interlocking office, uh, serving the citizens there with uh, 
All of the transactions that we offer, offer there, we are full service. So she offers a driver's license, tax payments, and motor services services to the uh, citizens in the West Putnam office. We are recognizing Lavinia today for 15 years of service, and we appreciate those 15 years, Lavinia, and we hope to have you around for many more. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. like to say Lavinia and I worked together with Hitchcock 30 years ago. Wow. And um, she was at the wedding that Linda and I 30 years ago also. And the other blonde-headed lady there, her and I went to the ice cream truck together down here, <laughs> right down the road. Back that would after be Trish school. Foster. It was. Yeah, every day after school, the ice cream truck would meet us down the road. So, so that was this is why we love where we live. That's the right. story just goes round and round. It's that complete circle, isn't it? Uh, thank you again for allowing us to be here to recognize these people who have gone, done such a great service. And I know we see some West Putnam people here, so uh, they also know those faces, Lair uh, Commissioner Harvey. Um, if you'll let me just for a moment, it's an opportunity to share some important dates with the citizens as well as you folks. Um, first of all, we always tell you we're highlighting a different tag that's a charitable organization. In the month of November, we are highlighting Invest in Children. So if you haven't been to our office to look at it, and we have it on our Facebook page, it's an attractive license plate, so it does two things. One, it brings visibility of the need to invest in our children, and two, the dollars raised, which is just a small amount added to your plate price, goes to charitable organizations that support our children's programs. Most of the programs are after-school type programs around the state of Florida. So um, we just want to make sure that you all know that and the citizens are aware should they be interested next time they renew. And of course, tax bills went out this month and I know, I, did I hear a groan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not so good for that. We are in the discount period. I just want to remind folks for the next four months, the cost of their taxes and the cost of the uh, garbage, what we can people call the garbage fee, that's also discounted. So um, if you make your payment in November, it's 4%, December, 3% discount, and so forth. 2% in January, 1% in February. In the month of March, it's the full amount due before March 31st. So I want to remind folks of that. And of course, we have a lot of wonderful folks who live in uh, mobile home parks. Their, their decals, as they know, are due in December. Uh, December 31st, after that, they become delinquent. And we hate that because it's additional costs. And right now, people don't have that. So thank you for the opportunity to share what's happening in the office and share these opportunities for Putnam County. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> OK, next we have from uh, <coughs> Hospice of the Citrus and Nature's Coast, we have Dr. Lafferty with us. If we could get Bertie and all you guys, Rodney Phillips, come on down. Good to have you here today. We're going to have Commissioner Harris uh, share with us a proclamation. We're going to do it. We have two proclamations. We've chosen the um, Kids Grieving Camp. I think you'll agree a, a great service that your organization provides to our community, and we're very grateful for it. Commissioner Harris? Okay. Whereas children who have a loved one die, especially a close family member, experience intense inner turmoil, and whereas every school district has students who have experienced personal loss and there are more grieving children than most of us realize, and whereas the Florida legislature resolved on April 7, 2011 to observe Children's Grief Awareness Day in Florida annually on the Thursday before Thanksgiving, and whereas Children's Grief Awareness Day provides an opportunity for all of us to raise awareness of the painful impact that the death of a loved one has in the life of a child. An opportunity for all of us to recognize and support the millions of grieving children across the nation. The thousands of grieving children right in our own communities and the grieving children we know and see in our daily lives. And whereas parental grief is boundless and touches every aspect of a parent's being, and whereas Harry's Kids Pediatric Services provides specialized services to children 
and teens with life-threatening illnesses and offers grief support and therapeutic camps for young people and their loved ones who have experienced a loss. Now, therefore, the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners hereby proclaims November 20th as Children's Grief Awareness Day in Putnam County and applauds the work currently being accomplished to support grieving children on their journey toward hope after a loved one dies. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept this proclamation. I second it. Motion is second. Any further discussion? We hope to hear some from this group. But all in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. And the motion captured. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I further move that the Proclamation 21474 National Hospice and Palliative Care Month be adopted. Thank you for that. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Chip. Good morning. My name is Kathy, and I work in the, the bereavement department, and I work with the children of Putnam County to help them with their grief during their, their periods of loss. And it's, it's a pleasure to do that. It's very hard. But Hospice of Citrus and the Nature Coast offers this to everybody, regardless if they were in hospice or not. They offer it to anybody in the community to um, come and, and seek help. So we go into the schools. We have grief camps that we just had in October. That was a great success, and we hear about that all year long. We have Grief Awareness Day, the 20th. Uh, we'll have something going on at 5.30 at our office, so anybody that knows anybody, they're, they're more than welcome to come. We do something for the children. We have renewals. We have lots of things that we offer, and this is at no cost. I get called by the schools all the time to come, and sometimes I have to rush right over there and, and help, and it's fit, and I'll tell you, it's it's, it's got my heart lately. I didn't plan to come here or to, to do this job, and, and now they're not going to get rid of me because <laughs> it is, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but anyway, it's a pleasure to serve the, the people of Putnam County, and I really Kathy, do enjoy if it. If you would, would you share for the room um, what takes place at the kids' grieving camp? I think, you know, I volunteer for that. I couldn't because of a conflict this year, but I think that's a wonderful experience for these children. And if you can tell us what your organization does for these kids. Well, we start out with breakfast at 7 o'clock at Beef O'Brady's, and then we have a group of um, boaters, performance boats that comes from Jacksonville and takes the, the campers, the kids and their families, over to Federal Point and St. Mark's, St. Paul's, Paul's Episcopal, I know. St. Paul's Episcopal, um, we have it on their, their grounds, and it's right there on the water. We start off with doing, um, well, we do our little safety kick and stuff, but we start off getting everybody together, and then we go into groups, and we have the different age groups, and we also have them for the adults that come so that they can help the children <clears throat> or their families grieve and learn how to work that together because so many times... They, they cut that off. It's too hard. But in the groups, we help the children learn to talk to each other, learn to understand that they're not alone, that um, many times kids, they sit out there and they watch someone like their, their mom, if they lost their mom, come. And every day they watch a mom come and pick up the kids, and they don't have that. So this allows them to be with other kids that understand exactly what they have, and they're not outside looking in anymore. They are the ones, and, and we have all kinds of activities that helps them um, understand the physical part so that the mental part and the physical can connect together. We have lunch provided for them while breakfast and lunch and snacks. Then we have um, activity time where there's boats and kayaks and horses and archery, um, arts and crafts, because we always have a theme and we always try to embellish on the theme through the whole camp. And then we have a memorial time that they can honor the person they lost. And then everybody goes back to the um, uh, Quality Inn to pick up their cars, and that ends about four. And I tell you, it's great. It, the last couple of years has just been great. The, and it's done by, um, we don't pay anybody. It's done by donations and stuff. So it's a very- I looked out from the river last year, and I saw this tall figure under the oak trees leading a, a parade, a memorial parade. <laughs> Who might that be? But our I know. Commissioner Larry, Harvey. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Commissioner the Harvey. The master of colors I was. Yes, yes, I was. He did very well. Yes, we get a lot of support jacket. from people, yeah. and, and we appreciate it because it is, it is a journey, and it's a grief yeah. journey, and it just allows 
children to understand that they have a right to be mad and throw a fit and understand and, and we try to give them tools to how to work that so that they don't let that interfere and stop the hope and the enjoyment that they that kids deserve. Well it's a great day and, and they, they learn to cope and your organization, this organization really, we thank you we from do. the bottom of our hearts for what you provide. On there. Well thank Very you. Nice. We enjoy it. So thank, thank you for being you. here today, all of you. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Linda gets away. She doesn't want a picture. Oh, <laughs> Linda, Kathy, come on up. She always has to be down front. Uh -oh, the tax collectors are going back to work. Okay, there we go. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get back. We're not. Hey, old Girl Scout, Boy Scout trick here again. Thank you. Thank you. And very quickly, um, I, I just don't want to let it, the opportunity pass because I'd like to thank all of our volunteers in our county. Uh, many of the commissioners help us in different ways, and we're very appreciative because hospice is a mission that we really believe in. The, the community needs it, and we will all be touched by grief one day. And just know that we'll do our best to be here for everyone, but thanks to our volunteers. We couldn't do it without them. Thank you, Dr. Lapp. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have Carolyn Gardner from our uh, Veterans Services Office, and good morning. And what a great day yesterday. Wasn't it? Starting with the weather. Was bright, nice and cool, nice turnout. We couldn't ask for more to honor our vets. I was very impressed. It was a great day. Yes, sir. So, and we would like to thank Richard also. He couldn't be our, our, our agent for the county. He had business in Jacksonville on our behalf today, but if you would. Um, because of Veterans Day and yesterday, we thought this would be a good opportunity to let the veterans of Putnam County know that there is an office here to assist them with the needs that they might need being a veteran. Um, in our office, we have several services with filing claims for compensation, survivor benefits, financial assistance, burial benefits, education, and then there's also retraining for the current veteran that might be coming back. There's property tax exemption, special adaptive housing, grave marker and flag, and pension. And the big one that we're finding now is the aid and attendance. That is for our older veterans that are on pension that because of maybe dementia or other needs, their spouse or family isn't able to take care of them. If they qualify for pension, there is an extra benefit for aid and attendance that can assist them financially with bringing someone in the home or maybe with the cost being in a nursing home, which we really feel that is really a great need. With all of the different programs, our office, we're here to assist them through the, we like to say the maze of veterans <laughs> benefits. Uh, the only thing we ask is they bring their discharge or DD-214 because we need to know if they can qualify or not. Um, we also wanted to let the county know what the office has done in the past year. Financially, the VA expenditures in Putnam County was $51,066,461. Wow. This to us is really a financial benefit considering our veteran population is only 7,945. The county rank, ranking per capita with benefits from the VA is 37 out of 67, which I think is really great for us. The average expenditure per veteran is $6,427. The county ranking expenditure per veteran is 14 out of 67.
the county realizes over $19 million in compensation and pensions in Putnam County alone. We also are very proud of the education and rehab benefits that total over $1 million. During the past year, our office has assisted total claims with 695, office visits with 1,373. So we're quite, quite proud of what our office has accomplished and we thank the county because I don't believe the veterans know this office, our salaries and all are supported by the county. We're not the VA, we are their advocate, we're their assistants, and it's through the money of Putnam County that this office survives. So, any questions? Well, Ms. Gardner, uh, I'll ask the board members any questions. I would just like to make a statement. I, I really appreciate your office. My grandson, my oldest grandson, just came, came home from Fort Hood, Texas, <laughs> and very confused about what he was supposed to do. And I said, you know, the first thing we're gonna do is go down to your office. And we did, we scheduled an appointment, and the clarity and the vision that he got was unparalleled. So I really thank you for that. And if anybody's out there is watching and you've got servicemen or woman coming home, you know, regardless whether you think you need this office, come down and, and let us see if we can help you on that because you did a great job for him. Well, thank you. We like, we try to give them a roadmap because right. it, it's quite confusing and we have to go for training yearly because as you know, the rules change constantly. So. Thank you, Mr. With that being said, um, have you all got any early idea of what the new change at the federal level with our new secretary of veteran services might bring about? Well, I will say this, hearing from several veterans, that they are proud that they heard their complaints and the people that are responsible would no longer be there. It was a complex problem. We had many veterans coming back they didn't realize at the time, I'm not making excuses, but they were kind of overwhelmed, but it needed to be corrected and we're sorry for the way that it was handled, but I believe he's going in the right direction. Yes, we've got a very capable individual mm -hmm. heading that up. And, um, well, we thank you and the office, and of course our men and women that are serving have served and oh, died for our country. Again, it was a, a great season for veterans, and of course that season runs all year. It does, every day. And we should be thanking our veterans for our freedom. Thank you, Carolyn, Mr. for being Chairman, here. Just yes, one I'm sorry, more thing. Commissioner Harris. Um, we also are in Interlochen and Crescent City. Correct, I'm sorry, those are our satellite office. My service officer does go there in the afternoons on certain days. We ask that anyone who would like to go to those office call our main number and we can give you the hours and the times. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you again. Um, I echo what I'm hearing my colleagues say. For the staff size you have and the magnitude of what you do um, and the passion that you put into it, we are certainly grateful and thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Flagg. Okay. Walton, you good? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Okay, uh, <coughs> commissioners, next on our agenda this morning, we have public comment. Unless I'm missing anything, that was kind of a lengthy beginning, but I think I'm okay. Yeah. Um, we'll start off, the first card I got was from Mr. Uh, Rick Haven. <coughs> okay, Rick Haven, uh, 115 Dada Circle, Crescent City. Uh, I've got some questions this morning. Uh, I haven't seen anything more about the plaque of housing authority. Uh, are they going to have to pay for the garbage pickup like the rest of us? I'll direct that uh, question to um, County Administrator Mr. Leary. He's had the most correspondence okay. with those folks. Uh, if you have anything at all, Mr. Leary. Well, we did have a meeting with, uh, with the director and uh, their attorney and uh, we have not uh, necessarily finalized anything. We are still having some ongoing dialogue with, uh, with them, and we haven't reached any final conclusion about that at this point. 
My understanding is they that they're only wanting to pay $78 a month, and I had to take in, my tax bill shows 395 That's kind of a little inequity there. Okay, the next question. Uh, since uh, John Thrasher won the Senate, and now it looks like we're going to go into a special election sometime soon, uh, will we have something on the ballot about what the taxpayers would like to see to do with the landfill? Are you going to get some kind of wording? To I'll direct that question to the person that has advocated for that, and okay. uh, Mr. Commissioner Palacier. Um, Ms. Traven, I'm going to bring that up a little later in the meeting at okay. an appropriate time. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, my next thing goes to item D on the consent agenda. You're going to spend $63,413 out at Tanglewood. Uh, got some questions. <clears throat> uh, you acquired this, I believe, in 2003 from Ducks Unlimited or one of the wildlife management or something like that. <clears throat> that it, I don't think that's true. Mr. Uh, Castleberry, didn't it come from a family? I think it came from the Florida Wildlife Federation. Um, oh, yeah. Right, that's what I'm, yeah. You're correct. That's what, yeah. And is it not true that Bob, that the director of Parks and Recreation lived there for a number of years? Yes. There's a house. And there. it was supposed to be a bird viewing area, but you got a great big sign right at the front that says no public admittance. Well, not yet. That's what you're seeing on the consent agenda today to yep. get this opened up for the public, sir. Okay. <clears throat> um, I looked up on some of the recent sales of property, in particular Nine Mile Swamp, the Georgetown property, and there are a list of about a dozen different things the county administration is supposed to do in acquiring those properties. Uh, I would like to ask how many nature walks you have had out at Nine Mile Swamp since you purchased that property. None of, all these parks you just named, sir, are in hold until we can best implement a master plan for them and what their intentions will be. Nobody's uh, doing anything on these parcels yet. But I didn't see anything in the thing that, that you had a period there was supposed to be 12 of those a year. I'm not Did I misunderstand? Person. Okay. I don't know uh, the other thing, uh, how many kiosks have built, been built out at uh, the Georgetown property about the nature conservancy and so again, forth? Sir, and it's, absolutely, again, it's nothing. Not part of the uh, active parks and recreation inventory <clears throat> that we have at this time. But again, both those items were one that are things that were in the contract, the purchasing things that the, the county is supposed to do and the purchasing of that property. Still are. That's true. Uh, where are the funds, the $63,413 coming from? You've not ever expanded the parks and recreation budget that I've seen the last couple of years, and yet you're taking uh, $11,689 out of the park recreation, but to build what, a little kind of viewing area and a bathroom and- Parking lot, and that's uh, what we intend to do with it, true. But where'd the money come from? The Parks and Recreation budget, isn't it, Mr. Leary? Well, it, as okay. it states in the agenda, $51,724 is coming from the impact fees that have accumulated uh, over a number of years, and the balance of that is coming from uh, the Parks and Recreation budget. And, you know, this proposed expenditure is satisfying some of the obligations contained in the management plan emanating from the uh, construction, I mean, from the acquisition acquisition of the property you know, there were certain objectives that had to be uh, that were promised to be fulfilled through the management plan and this satisfies some of those although we are quite a bit behind schedule in satisfying them there's a number of activities slated to be used on that site because it does uh, it's riverside and it'll be a wonderful facility as far as uh, being able to kayak and bird watch and just pretty much environmental science associated with the river is what our intentions to do there is. It also bring in an enormous amount of money if you guys would s just simply sell it. The properties adjacent to it are paying, uh, uh, I don't know, I think the last time I looked like $400,000 a year in taxes. And well, that's 
you know, I all right, you got opinion. seven. There's seven acres up against the river. Then you got the nine uh, West River Road coming through, and 25 miles on the other side, or 25 acres on the other side, that is not on the river. What are you going to do with that? I had to seen anything Mr. yet to Chairman. do again would not assail that property but to take and pay for we've had people up here complain about their roads and nothing's been done for years uh, uh, I just you see there are requirements in the donation that certain milestones or thresholds have to be met for that property <coughs> and or you just can't sell it I'm sorry, sir. Okay, but if the Wildlife Federation had held on to the land, they would have been paying taxes all this time, and so you acquired I it. I don't think that's true either. Let's oh, no, no, I looked it up. They were still paying taxes. Let's have Mr. Leary speak Let on Let me it. correct a misconception about something. If, if the county were to sell that property, regardless of how much compensation we were to get for that, we wouldn't keep that money. We'd have to return it to the I know, community trust. I that's what trust, I'm trying to explain, where to Mr. Haven. The, that's where the money came from to buy that property. So, yeah. you know, it wouldn't you know, be. It wouldn't you'd be have to return it where? Money retained by the county. You have to return it where? To the community's trust foundation, which is where the money came from to buy the property in the first place. It was not county money that bought that property. Okay, but we lost the, the tax revenue that it used to generate. Well, I don't even remember if they were paying taxes on it. Do you? I do not know. Okay. All right. That's all my questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> all right. Next, we have Faye Sparkman. Good morning. Mr. Pellisier, you sure brighten up this room and it makes my day. <laughs> Bright as the sunshine. Anyway, yesterday was the best Veterans Day's parade that we've watched in many years. And the best part of the whole parade was seeing a band, watching that great big thing on load that whatever it was, a Jeep. But the best part then was at the end with the ambulance playing Lee Greenwood's song, God Bless the USA. So the reason I'm up here today is I know you had a workshop, so could you please give me an update on what you decided to do or if anything about 315. This is not about me, this is about our children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. 315's getting worse. Mm -hmm. And it's like many roads in the county we're trying to address on a small budget. We talked in our transportation workshop about moving some priorities around and possibly moving that into a different category and so on and so forth. We hadn't done anything, uh, uh, any dis no decision's been made yet, but it's uh, very much part of the discussion in our transportation workshops. Okay, thank you for looking into it. I have one other question. When people file grievances in this county, and especially if they have more than one, and you guys are all the bosses. What happens to those grievances? Does anybody get a reprimand? Do they get fired? Do they lose any of their money? What happens? A grievance in... Okay, you were given four weeks ago four signed grievances about an employee. What do you do? Because you all are the bosses. What happens? Does they it go just... to the appropriate department heads. And do, we what deal do you with them end again. up Every doing? Every one of them, I can remember uh, that you signed are again, things that need budget priorities and this sort of thing, and we'll work them in as no, we can. No, but I mean, what happens to them? Do they get a reprimand? Do they get any other, anything written in their file? A personnel grievances. Yes. You had requests also mixed into there. Right, uh, but what happens, anything or nothing? Well, I think it's a misnomer to say that we are the bosses. We are legislators. Yeah. But are you're also everybody. Makers? You we, are their boss. We have human resource uh, specialists uh, within our county in each of the departments. Each of the departments uh, do have proper training and they are in consultation with our director of human resources so that due process and all of the laws that regulate human resources are followed. And it is not prudent for us to get involved into those activities. Um, we just need to stay out of it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a legislative function. But we all put you up there to protect us and look out for us. And so 
to me, you all need to check on who you have in all the heads of your department and just check them out maybe every couple months, once a year, something. See if they're doing their jobs that you put them there to do. I mean, that was my job too, working for the state too. And when you're put in that position, you have to check your employees, am I correct? They have annual reviews. Thank you. All right, next we have Janet Smith. Janet Smith, 60 Care Free Drive, Wilaka. <clears throat> um, I have several questions this morning. One is, um, a lot of you said you didn't understand about the plasma arc for this reason or that reason. Uh, I got a copy from Mr. Haven where he sent all of you a lot of links of videos about the plasma arc that are operating in the U.S. And it is my understanding that he asked each of you to please respond to him. Did you get that? And some feedback on that. Unfortunately, the only one that responded to Mr. Haven was Larry Harvey. So my question to each of you, did you watch those videos? Well, I'll start off. And um, I'd watched probably 80% of them before I've gotten the links. And I'm of the opinion there is not one operating successfully in the United States of America. Second. I likewise did the same. And I respect the task force that is currently operating. And he and everybody else have opportunity to present to them I think over time, sometimes we as the legislators have preempted committees that we have appointed and we're giving them opportunity to do their due diligence. I have been out of the office. My husband had heart surgery Friday and I have not seen my email. Yeah, it, I'm sorry for that and I wish him well. However, I think the email was sent quite a few weeks earlier. Um, <clears throat> In regards to Tanglewood, last time, as a citizen and a taxpayer, we asked to see the agreement. You know, you think it was this one and you think it was that one, but you don't know. And we ask, could we see the agreement and what was agreed to and what was expected of the county to which you said that you would provide that? Do you have that for the citizens to see? And did you? do a public records request to one of the departments that oversees that? I understood case, last time that you guys would provide it for us. I don't remember the conversation being that way. We said it was available. Oh, that's always easier. Um, as far as transparency, all of these public lands and what you're obligating us for and posterity for the future, the taxpayers deserve to see what our neck is on the chopping block for. It seems that there are many properties that the tax that the county has purchased and there are obligations that come with those and they come at later times and they all bear expenses which comes down on the taxpayer. It seems that if you really would like to be transparent all of those agreements should be on the website for anyone to equal to find easily. If you really want to be transparent, that's the way to do it. And as far as Tangle Wild, before you decided to spend taxpayer money on this, first off, we didn't get the records of what you promised, so now you're spending money on it. So obviously, I think I know the answer to this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Did you do any kind of investigation? How many people in the county would actually use that park? Who's going to drive from all over the county to use that park? And those people that are going to use that park, if there indeed are any, Will those be activities that the people would participate in? Mrs. Smith, have you used any of the boat launches in the Georgetown, Fruitland, Wilaka area? I have to ask the question. You couldn't have, or you wouldn't ask that question. 
We don't have one. That's what Tangle Wild's for, for the future and big events that would bring economic development to those areas that is desperately needed. Do we have any studies on how that particular one would be utilized in relation to others? Which ones are going to bring in the most money? Have are, real studies you're, you're been again used? You're talking about multiples, and there are none. Wielaka has the only boat launch. You have a dirt <coughs> launch next to the Drayton Island Ferry. Deplorable and unexcusable for a county that boasts the bass capital of the world, and we intend on improving those ramps. Okay, but we have many yes. other parks. Commissioner Harris. I just want to say she that's. Has, chairs of Waterways Committee. That is the only park in that end of the county um, that's on the water. We're talking about Tangle Wild? No. <laughs> she is, I believe. Are you, you're talking about Tangle Wild. I am, but it's, the, it's part of a bigger question that I have. It's part of a much bigger question. There does not seem to be any overall plan. We have X amount of money to spend. We don't have enough money for roads. We don't have enough money to deal with the landfill. And I'm just sitting here wondering, in our houses, when the roof is leaking, we don't buy TV sets. Do you want to answer? And I'm wondering no, about will. taking care Again, of basics here. They are in a hold status right now because of what you just said. We will not spend money on any of these endeavors <laughs> until we are more flush. Our housing values have plummeted over the recession. We're aware of these things. And um, the question you're proposing is, is just not true. You're saying that we're, we're obligating monies to these uh, parks, and it's not true. We have them. Florida Forever money bought them, not Putnam County tax dollars. You know what the numbers were on Amendment 1 just a week ago yesterday. And 72%, uh, I think, of the Floridians said that they cherish publicly held lands to be used for recreation, particularly if they adjoin a water body. Well, that's a whole I'm nother sorry, subject. Your group doesn't agree with that, and it doesn't, and that's why you and Rick are here, because you don't like public parks. I can't help that. That is not true. Okay, then why that are you is complaining not true. about the public parks? First, first off, you're spending money today on Tanglewild, and I'm asking, has all the studies been Tangle done, Wild and can we see? has been with us before the recession, we have saved towards it. We've dedicated some money that was set aside through impact fees to improve it, and the public has asked us to open it up time and time again. That one's going to be opened. You can't use those monies on anything else. You can't move something from one part of the budget to another? Mr. Larry, can you elaborate? I, I, he just explained it, but the, we'll the, explain it again. The $51,724 for impact fees is... Uh, that was collected for recreation is dedicated for that purpose and can't be used for anything else other than that from some capital outlay related to recreation. Have you looked at the uh, other parks? Are there any complaints of other parts of things that need to be fixed of those that are already now being utilized before you open up Ongoing something that process. is not being? All the time. Okay, but we would like to see an overall plan and again, you have to remember, we ask questions because every single public land that is not on the tax rolls is more burden on the taxpayers. And we have the right to ask these when questions. When you're equation of that, you say 30% of our land in Putnam County is held for parks and recreation. You don't account for the Ocala National Forest, the state parks, Ravine Gardens, Duns Creek, mm -hmm. and these other. They make up the majority of that 30%. If you get down to county-held parks, they're a small percentage of what you boast. At this point, it seems from looking as a taxpayer that we're still We've got leaking roofs and we're buying TV sets in our own budgets, in our own homes. We like the nice things. I like parks, et cetera. But we still have not truly taken care of the leaking roofs. It doesn't look like there's an overall plan to totally use the money responsibly. Mr. Smith, that plan is available to you with a public records request at Parks and Recreation anytime you would like it. It really is. Okay, there what is about an overall master plan? All right, and what about putting it on the website so that it's okay, easy we've for heard people that to request. find? I think that's uh, fair. We should have it on the, the website. Exactly, as well as all of the agreements for the but other it is areas. It's available to you. You realize that. 
again, are we going to have to go to all these different departments? Why not just put it on the website? If transparency is important, the easy thing to do is to put it on the website so that it's very accessible by the citizens to look at it. But going forward, I can't imagine that you could justify buying any more land at this point because there is no plan in place to take care of what we have and the obligations Karen, I don't agree with all that. with us. That's not true. That's what you're saying. But you haven't seen the document. How can you sit there and say that? Well, show them to us. Well, ask for them. I did. No. <laughs> last okay. week. Please put it on I'm the not website. I'm going to argue with you, but that's your opinion, and I don't think it's proven. Well, I'm sorry, but it's also my tax money, and I like to know how it's spent. Okay. Okay, we have Robert Blake is with us this morning. Good morning. Robert Bly. 116 Sand Lake Drive, Pomona Park, Excuse Florida. Excuse my pronunciation, sir. <laughs> uh, everybody gets it wrong. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's <laughs> blue. Right. Anyway, uh, do that. I know today we've had a lot of people uh, getting a little bit upset, and it all comes down to money. Uh, and like others have said, you know, you've got you've to have a good budget. Uh, my wife does that for me. Fortunately, because I'm terrible at it. I'll spend every penny I've got. And, and that's uh, a problem. I, I'm, I mean, it's kind of like a, a recurring theme here. We, we spend, 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 and we don't have money. You know, I, I realize we're, this is a tough economy. Uh, housing prices have plummeted. You know, we've got people moving out of the county, um, people who have money moving out of the county. A lot of people are retiring, you know, so they're losing. Uh, we've seen a few people here today retire. Um, what that means is they're not going to have the same money that they had this week, next week. Uh, so they're not going to be able to hire somebody to come over and cut their grass anymore. They're going to have to do it. Um, if the roof has a leak, uh, they're not going to qualify for a new roof if they go get a loan. Um, they're definitely not going to be buying property because they can't afford it. And now if, if they've spent their money wisely, they own their home. They're not paying someone else rent. Uh, but, but now they're going to be paying a lot more in taxes for trash. Trash, which, you know what, I, I personally don't even need to use the dump. I know how to take care of all my own garbage. I mean, we've done it for centuries you just take and dig a hole out back and you put it in it I mean that's what we do here you might put a plastic bag under it but but the whole thing is you take your garbage and you dump it out back that's what we do but I don't need to pay anybody else to do that I mean I can dig a hole and I can drop that garbage in there but I can't get off of uh, the uh, tax however you want to call it, I, I can't get my property removed from my liability to pay for the dump out here. It means I, I don't have a choice. I have to pay to dump my trash out here. I can't dump it in my backyard even though I own my property. So knowing that, knowing that the people uh, of Putnam County don't have a choice, we're being forced to do whatever it is that you all uh, advise us or say that you uh, know you know better than us and I'm here to say I, I think there's a better way and I think that some people who say that this isn't proven uh, are overstepping their bounds I think that the people of Putnam County would like to see it happen and that's all I have to say okay thank you thank you Robert. okay that's all the blue cards I have today anybody from the public at this time. Ms. Shirley, good morning. How are you? Morning. <clears throat> Shirley Elwes, 867 Hunter Road. I don't know, update going to um, Hunter Road. Uh, when I came out and saw you last week, I did a little survey of how many roads there are tied to it and some residences that are along the Hunter Road. Um, 
I'm composing a small map that I'm going to bring before the uh, transportation meeting in uh, two weeks, I guess it is, and I'd like for you to attend that if you'd like to, but I don't okay. have it ready yet, but I just was getting the mileage and how many homes on the, uh, along that road and then the feeder roads that come off of that and okay. was going to bring it for the transportation meeting then. So it'll be done next year? I can't answer that. I'm, I've got to bring it before the transportation meeting in two weeks, but I'm so composing a map. So in two weeks at the meeting, you would know then? No, I can't give you a definitive. I, I'm just one vote of the bunch, remember? Um, I'm bringing it before them for to, for the transportation Edwards, looking. Edwards number, yes, contact I'm, information. I want your contact her. If you are able to, to attend a transportation okay. workshop, we can elaborate further and, okay. and show it. Um, earlier I mentioned we were removing some priorities around hopefully to and get that's one roads. Of them. And okay. you're one of them in that discussion. Okay. that maybe we can get to earlier. Okay. We don't have a date set yet. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, always good to see you. Anybody else from the public? Mr. Spell, good morning. How everybody doing this morning? Very good. Sure. Um, Mr. Libel, um, Benji mentioned on the park there, go out to the bar and them, some of those um, tours out there at that park there, I think they time for a repair on them. Vince, I heard you kind of corrected that lady. And um, my next thing is Mr. Flagg. All right, now I don't know that very much about the Bible, but um, is it not to be said that two loaves of bread and seven fish fed a multitude? Well, okay, well, I just added two more to it, but <laughs> anyway, but for you to have the knowledge of believing that, how can you say the plaza arc or the gasification you know ordeal won't work so it's everybody basing their opinion they believe what they want to believe and they take out and don't want to believe these things but you know god give man knowledge of doing things you got a cell phone you got a laptop so i don't see how y'all can use the committee as leverage of waiting to see what they're going to decide when if you're not spending the money to do it and there's someone willing to Fix your leaking roof, and all you got to do is sit in the house and stay dry. Why stand in the way? Have faith in God, but everybody else need to prove what they are presenting. I, I still, if you got faith in God, still, God gave that man the knowledge of doing whatever. Every inventor had the knowledge from God to do. But we know we don't need to bring religion into it, but you're supposed to take him everywhere you go in. But, you know, I still say... That man have the right of every other inventor that has been on the face of the earth rather than someone trying to knock him down. Again, Paul Flagg is not in the business of knocking anybody down, but that man, that woman, or whomever it is, when they come before this commission, as long as I'm one of the five that's up here, they need to have a presentation that is tried and true, and they need to have a reputation and everything that they need in their proposal to give us peace of mind so that we can agree on, at least by consensus or by majority of this commission, that that is the direction that this county needs to go in. It's easy for people to sit out in the audience and to tell us what we should have, could have, would have done, but the truth of the whole matter is we have to vet every proposal that comes before us. None of us were elected because we have all of the answers, but we are to listen attentively, and we do, but every now and then, there are advocates who feel a specific way about a specific proposal, and when it doesn't go their way, all of a sudden we become scoundrels and we become a whole lot of other things. And that's why we're elected. We're supposed to be able to take that, and I don't have a problem with that. However, I don't deal with individuals as it relates to who brought it. I deal with the complexity and the dynamics of the issue. And at this particular point in time, the issue that you're raising about the, the plasma, plasma arc and the gasification, all of those things, again, Putnam County does not have to be the breaking ground for any of those projects. This is a big United States of America, and the proof is in the pudding. Individuals can bring whatever they choose to bring, and the wisdom of this commission has to always be uh, respected because, again, we don't violate sunshine. When you come before us or any other citizens come before us or we're hearing information for the first time, oftentimes we're hearing uh, proposals and things of that nature, there is no backroom meeting. Each independent, independent thinker that's up here have to be able to, to listen, 
bring their knowledge, their wisdom, their experience, their expertise, all of that to the table. And when we have healthy debates, sometimes it seems like we are against each other. That is not the case. We're trying to get our point over. When it's all said and done, we want to move this county forward. So I am not against anything that is for the betterment of this, this, this county. But at the same time, until I have evidence and proof, and I'm persuaded in my heart that I need to be supporting something, then this commissioner is not for sale. So in other words, you saying even as far as all the engineers and everything that actually work for the county, you have proof that they do quality work. That's what you kind of give me an impression of. Okay, now you have changed gears. No, but what I'm saying, you said proof, all right now, you know, anytime people do the different work through the county, they got to be inspected by inspectors and all, wrong or right. Okay, so if you get time today, I want you to ride over there to East Palaka and look in front of that fire station and look at the quality of the work that was done as far as fixing that parking lot. Right now, they got water puddles. Now, to me, anytime you take and buy quality stuff to fix something, you want to actually see a finished quality um, job. Now, if you ride over there and look at that par parking lot, y'all could have gave me that money there and I could have took the bobcat and some milling and done that there. But like I say, the thing of it is, you know, every, all of you up there are supposed to be for the people. Now, from what I've seen so far, you got a lot of people rather go to the gasification. I got a garbage bill to pay and I don't even see why would, you know, the garbage rate jump up like that. But while you're kicking the can down the road, everybody already going through a financial a struggle. And even on, you know, just dragging the can down the road, we already had the committee one time, now we got another, and it just keeps stretching it out. Something gonna have to be done regardless of what you do. Mr. Spell, uh, progress is being made. Uh, be assured that none of us sitting up here wanted to see any fees or any taxes increased. It was uh, as clear as it could possibly be that the side effect or the downside of us not going into privatization and regionalization was going to have an, uh, an adverse impact. However, we are progressively uh, moving toward getting as much of a reverse on an increase as we possibly can. Had this commission all unanimously got behind the project uh, with the majority vote or unanimous vote on the privatization agreement that was before us, right now everybody would call us scoundrels and a few other things because they felt like there was something behind the scenes going on with a specific company. The company was unfairly targeted because they did not pursue us. We knew administration knew that we needed relief for the taxpayers. It was not personal relief for the legislators or for the administrator. We all need relief as it relates to what we're paying uh, to maintain uh, government services and necessities in this county. However, again, I think that we're being presumptuous to think that this commission is kicking the can down the road. That is not an option for us. We are doing it, but again, this situation did not occur overnight and we're having to methodically correct it. That's what, that's what, we're, that's what we're really attempting to do. But um, we slowed it down uh, there because yes, we had uh, pressure on us to make a decision. And you know what? We were not going to satisfy 100% of our citizens with either decision. Right now we're getting the calls uh, uh, because the tax bills are, are, are in the mailboxes or in, you know, on, on, on the counter. We're getting the call saying, why didn't you scoundrels do this? Well, again, we were scoundrels if we had done the other thing. The room was packed with folk who were telling us not to do it, and now the calls are trickling in asking us why didn't we do it. Well, that was the reason why we caught that bill, just because they didn't do it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, can I res Mr. Yes. Spell, can I respond, Mr. Spell? I received an email last night uh, that I had not had time to check into, and I'll tell you that. Uh, that an art gasification plant did open up in Broward County for medical waste. I'm going to go down there if that's true, and I want to see that thing. I do believe that I don't mind being patent number one in Putnam County. I don't mind thinking outside the box. I often relate that to Mr. Mazur, who started Hudson Pulp and Paper, who had the idea to take down a pine tree, chop it up, bleach it, cook it, roll it out, dry it, and make toilet paper. There you go. And I'm sure people back then thought, that's a crazy old man, but he made it work, and it works well. 
And I'm excited about the future here in Putnam County, and I really want to see jobs, and I believe all of our commissioners do. I'm going to go to Broward County if that email is true. I'm going to look at that plant. I want to see what goes in it and what comes out of it, and I'd be excited to see if it would work here in Putnam County. So, Well, Putnam County needs something to put it on the map because we ain't got nothing here. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Patel. Okay. Anybody else from the public this morning for public comment? Anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move into the consent agenda portion of the uh, agenda here. Commissioners, are there any items wishing to pull? No. I have none. Mr. Chairman, I have, I really wanted to talk about D, E, and F, and um, there's not been a whole lot of people around this week um, because of Veterans Day, and we didn't get our packet till Friday, so. So you want to pull those items, Commissioner Harvey? I would like to talk about, um, I learned a lot more about Tangle Wild this morning, but yes, E, uh, actually, okay. just D and E, I just want to say congratulations on F of getting additional funds for the our library, but D and E I would like to discuss today. Okay, so <coughs> we're chairman, D. so move consent agenda be approved. Items A, B, C, F, G, H. Motion on four. Second. 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 Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, uh, signify by voting yes. Aye. Aye. Or yes. Aye. Yes. <laughs> I mixed up there. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. D. Commissioner Harvey. Mr. Leary. Um, found out today i learned a lot i guess in this proposal for tangle wild um, if i'm saying that right i thought this was just for consultant work but it looks like mr taylor has builders and developers inc um, he will be doing quite a bit of work out there is that, am i correct in seeing that he's going to do it on a design build that's correct okay so this might not be the total fee is that correct the $63,413? Well, hopefully it would be less. It could be less, could be a little more. Okay, in the county now, I see on item number six under on page 16, the county has a quite a few to, bit of work to do there too, 16 and 17. Yes, there will be some work done in-house with count, some county forces, yes. Okay, so there's gonna be some additional money spent there. My last question, Mr. Leary, is how much money, and please forgive me because I thought I knew impact fees. Um, I thought they were for infrastructure uh, more than recreation, but. Well, this is infrastructure. Okay, but how much is in the recreation impact fee fund? $51,724. That's the total fund of the recreation impact fee? That, that is the sum total, yes, sir. So we're going to delete that whole fund? Yes, sir. How much is in our impact fee fund now, total, 51. outside the 51000 Other than this, there's uh, some 500 and some odd thousand dollars that is totally dedicated in the transportation fund for uh, the East Pinellas project. Okay, so I guess my question, the total impact fee fund right now has 551000 It has 500 uh, it has a little more than that. I think the amount for for transportation is about 550,000, John, is that right? About 550,000 for the East Pinellas project and transportation. The East Pinellas project will far exceed that 550,000, so you'll have to augment that with some better place dollars. Uh, this five, this $51,724 uh, will wipe out the uh, recreation impact fund. Okay. And we've already fully expended the uh, impact fees that were collected uh, for fire and EMS, they've already been expended in the past. So once uh, this, this impact fee for recreation is expended, once the bid is awarded, uh, which we anticipate on December the 9th uh, for transportation for, for East Pinellas, once that is expended, all the impact fees on hand will be, have been totally expended. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so move that. Park and Recreation Addendum Number Five be approved. Motion mm. on the floor. A second. We got a second from Mr. Harvey. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. It carries. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Chairman, the other item, Number E, the wastewater phase one change order number one. 
for the 147,000. I just need a little clarity on that of what are we, why so quickly are we having an addendum on that one? Uh, FPNL request for one. If um, okay. Mr. Lear, you want to take it, or I can. I don't uh, care. This is this I is had uh, all those questions too. Okay. Okay. This this well, I had some of those asked, and I didn't know. Well, this is this is a change order, not unexpected. Okay. Uh, part of part of which is uh, good news in the fact that uh, it adds uh, some additional grinder pumps for customers that have decided that they would come on to the wastewater system uh, that were. Uh, not included in the original count uh, when the contract was awarded. These are people who have decided that it is in their best interest to come onto the system now rather than to wait. Uh, are these the ones in East Palaka? In the, East Palaka, the yes, and DePriest, is that correct? That's moving, part of it. Moving that water line more to the south? There's a list of them, I think. No, these are, not one, these are not ones coming on due to the movement of the line to south. Okay. These, are the, these are the ones in the service area uh, the initial service area who declined to come on to the system initially. Now that they see the system going in the ground, now that they know that if they didn't come on to the system initially, that they would have to bear the full cost if they didn't come on now during the construction, that if they waited until after the construction was completed and after service was initiated, that they would have to bear the full cost of coming onto the system when the, when the Florida statute kicked in that made it mandatory for them to come on, that they would have to pay the full cost. Now they are opting to come on while grant funds and loan funds are available to pay for them to come on. So that is part of, part of the reason for this change order is to acquire some of the, some of the grinder pumps to, to bring some of those customers on. And some of the other reason for the uh, change order is to, for FPNL to up, upgrade some of, the, some of the services at some of the, uh, some of the locations where uh, people have opted for service. Their, their service, uh, electrical service, was inadequate to support the grinder pumps. Will we see an additional addendum coming down to us or a change request for the moving of the water line <coughs> more to the south to include? You will, you will see that okay. eventually. You will also see a change order for uh, the, uh, the additional appropriation that was granted to us by the legislature that would uh, result in all of the work that, was, that will be necessary to bring the uh, uh, to take the uh, the uh, drain field and the septic service ab above the uh, aboard the uh, public works yard out of service, and to do some work aboard the uh, Putnam Correctional Institute to b to make sure that they are fully uh, able to bring that system on to uh, onto the service. So so that seven hundred fifty thousand dollar appropriation we got from the legislature is not yet incorporated and, into the and contract. And we'll be seeing that. Thank you, Mr. Lear. One, one one more thing I want to ask. So you brought up a good point was. The, we're waiting on a decision for Florida Department of Transportation on relocating those water lines, aren't we? It possibly their expense versus ours? Yeah, but that, that doesn't have anything to do with oh, the wastewater pool. Oh, I thought that's what we were talking about. <coughs> uh, th yeah, and, and that's, that, that's another separate issue on, on the construction and the widening of, uh, of Highway 17 down uh, from the uh, oh, from, I'm sorry. From 100 I'm sorry. down to... Uh, when Horse I hear Landing sewer lines, road, I start yeah. thinking about them. <laughs> that, that's another stuff. issue altogether, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I want, uh, yes. So move approval of change order number one for the East Putnam Regional Wastewater. It, he didn't pull that exactly. You've already approved that. No, we didn't. We, did we pulled. I it. did pull it. You did pull it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Motion. All right. A motion on the floor. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 I'm sorry. I only heard D. Commissioner okay. Harvey, just an addendum there on page 38. There's 11 names and addresses. I think that is the, the addition of what this cost has come from. Does that be right, Mr. Leary? Uh, I, th I thought it was nine, but maybe it's 11. It, it, mm -hmm. It's it's several. It anyway. Maybe I'm, maybe I miscounted. No, you're probably right. I, I just haven't looked at it good. Eleven. It's 11, but two are government. Right. Okay. And okay. Good. All right, uh, we're going to recess for five minutes while planning and development sets up for our series of public hearings coming up, and we'll reconvene at uh, 1020. What's that? Yes, you do. Hi, John. The uh, Board of County Commission meeting, Wednesday, November 12, 2014. 
and we're going to bring uh, Mr. Kevin Powell, I believe, is representing this morning. Good morning, sir. We have a, uh, or we want to do an amendment to the Article 3 of our local contractor licensing. And a couple things we want to change in uh, Section 1, we want to make it a little easier for uh, the contractors after they pass their test, they don't have to then come back and see the board again. So we've struck out all that language and it just says that once they pass the test, they go ahead and provide us the information with the fees and then they're able to go ahead and obtain their license. There's no reason to make them come back two mm -hmm. three times. In section three, we wanna make a change to that so we're a little bit more in line with what the state is doing. Uh, we uh, wanna take if their licenses expire after 365 days, the old language said that they had to go ahead and retest if they tested. We're taking that out. So if they've tested, then they're not going to have to retest. They'll just go ahead and pay the, the late fees and the penalties in order to reestablish their license. Uh, that does not uh, go into effect for a license that was grandfathered. That did not take a test. So if they never took a test or license expired, then they're going to have to go ahead and test to go One ahead thing, and do that. One uh, thing, Kevin, that concerned me in that Section 3, and I don't want to sound anti-military because you know it's not so, but what if an active duty person were called up for, say, a, tour, a long double tour, four years, Yes. and the state statutes changed, let's, let's use electrical. Right. You know, I, I agree they should pay no money whatsoever. Right. But I think we're being short-sighted not to realize that if there's some change on the state level, that that person should be uh, required to brush up on it, where, you know, where the, somebody didn't get electrocuted or, or procedures were not followed. I mean, am I wrong there? Yeah, I, I understand where you're trying to go with that, but if, if you've been a license holder for many years, it happened, it, when I deployed to Iraq, Right. I had to put my license on. You're a good example of this, yes. So then when I came back, I went ahead and uh, reinstated my licensure. Um, mm -hmm. Things had changed. I had to go ahead and do my continuing education like we all do with the contractor licensing. We do have continuing education. Okay, so you feel I didn't take that into uh, account. So yes, continuing sir. education should cover this? Yes, sir, because we have to go ahead and do our 14-hour continuing education every two years. So once you reinstate your license, you're going to have doing your continuing education. Okay, I'm I'm good with that. As long as you, right, chairman. Like I said, yes, I uh, Mr. Powell. And also, if they're going to submit electrical plans to you, and if they submit something different, you're going to be able to see that correctly. Yes, sir. That's a okay. good point. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you're going to go out there and go, hey, the, this changed, and you might need to brush up. In Correct. That area. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Well. We, we do that if, if, if there has been a change and, and that, that even goes on with a uh, person with a, a active license right now they may not keep up on it where we'll have to keep up on those items and then we'll bring it to their attention hey these are the changes and we usually try to do a community outreach to them saying hey this is the new changes this is a new code cycle the NEC the, the electricians is is a perfect example right. uh, they're, they're, they're still lagging behind uh, I think we're running on the 2008 instead of the 2014 so as they keep changing we have to notify them of the changes that are coming. That, that would affect them. Okay. I'm, I'm good with it. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, any questions on this section? No, no. All right, this is a public hearing we opened up, and as with any public hearing, we open up to the public for any concerns or comments that they might like to make. Anybody from the public? Yes, please, Ms. Rucklewitz. Ms. Juan, if you would please just give your name and. Uh, address for the record. Okay, Wanda Ruckowitz, 106 Taylor Street, Interlochen, Florida. I just have one question. If they go for continuous education, like he says that they're going to do, like you say, things change. And do they document and give it to somebody that they actually did the continuous education? The Are you law. going to follow up if they didn't? and take their and suspend their license or or what's going to happen there yes ma'am good question uh whenever we take continuing education we do have to go ahead and provide the proof of that continuing education to the licensing agency if you don't have that then yes your license will then lapse but is that not a state on the state level yes sir that's on the state it's level. on the state level yes, so i mean the proof 
is submitted there, and if their license are not renewed or if they expired by default or if they're suspended or whatever, then there's a direct relationship because the license is a state license. And that's a good thing because things have happened in this county with other contractors that shouldn't have happened, so I just want to right. cover the people. It can be a rather hostile meeting at these things sometimes. <laughs> okay. I like the anytime you make it less complicated, it helps improve that environment and when I open this document up and there's lines scratched through all this language you did a good job in my opinion thank you get it simple I like and to see that myself yeah well this also brings us in line with what surrounding counties are doing right. correct yes sir it, it does bring us in line with what the surrounding counties we try to go ahead and follow what the <coughs> state is doing right and so. uh, there again if we can make the process easier and not make it more restrictive and bring people down here two three four times <coughs> for not no reason then that's what we want to do. We want to make it easier on them. You guys, if you would, let me, uh, anybody else from the public? We had one, but I want to make sure. Okay, we'll close the public portion of the hearing and we'll open up <laughs> commissioner deliberation, which we've been doing anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, anything else anybody wants to add? Seeing none, we'll enter. Uh, Chairman, we'll I move yes. approval of amending Article 3. Okay, motion Second. Also. Second. All in, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion. Thank Kevin, you. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Pan. Okay. Next, we have a zoning map amendment with Mr. John Sammons and the Dallas family. How are you today? Oh, hey, well. good. How are you? We have the uh, petition here. They're here with us, too. Uh, this first case is our. 14005, it's a zoning map amendment from C2 light commercial and R2 residential to uh, C3 uh, general commercial. Uh, this is a request by Dorothy and Ralph Dallas uh, to rezone the property at 899 State Road 19 in Palatka from R2 residential and C2 commercial uh, to C3. Future land use category is urban service. Uh, which is our most intense uh, future land use category. Uh, the rezoning and the future land use would allow an automotive service location at this uh, service uh, facility at this location. This property, if you're familiar with it, has been used uh, uh, for uh, automotive stuff in the past. This is a uh, uh, a case where the old zonings that they did back in the 80s and 90s where if we didn't have buffering requirements they would leave part in the back zoned R2 if it was next to residential or R1 or whatever it happens to be that's what this case is uh, basically Mr. Dallas is trying to get it rezoned all to uh, C3 uh, the Planning Commission heard this case on October 6th October 8th excuse me 2014 and the unanimously recommended that the Board of County Commissioners approve the request and rezone the parcel from R2 and C2 to C3, and there was nobody present at the hearing uh, in opposition to the request. Any questions by the board? Okay. Uh, commissioners, I'll open it up. Discussion? Any Mr. questions? Dallas is we here. do have the Dallas family with us here today, if you have any questions or things. Hearing none, I'll open it up to the okay. public. Mr. Ralph, would any any questions, concerns, or anything? Uh, well, no, I, I don't have any concerns except I guess I want to uh, go ahead and do something. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. If you would, um, Mr. Dallas, if you give your name and address for the record, please, sir. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is Ralph Dallas, Jr. Uh, I reside at 899 North State Road 19, Palaka, Florida. And don't wanna, I don't get a chance to get up here to face you all often, but I, I intend to in the future. But uh, my concern is just that I want to make sure that I reap all the benefits of what that the business corridor there is, is represents. And part of my property was R2 in the backside, and, and I think he's already addressed that. I just want to make sure that you know I, I'm zoned to a point where if, anything I need to do legally that I can do it and that's why I'm here today we appreciate you cooperating with staff and getting these things up to 
snuff in that area corridor you're in, I think, is uh, poised to grow very soon and yes. very fast when it does. So I think it's wise yes. getting this straightened out, Mr. Dallas. I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else from the public? Seeing none, uh, commissioners. I so Mr. <laughs> Got to be quick around. I'm telling you, <laughs> you were me, Mr. Flag. Come back. <laughs> he calls you. I so moved that the zoning map amendment from C2 and R2 to R2 and C3 uh, that it be uh, revised. Second. Second. Mr. I beat you on that one. <laughs> she was planning that one all along. Part two communication. <laughs> Ralph, you need to bring as much as you can because they really want to get you done. <laughs> yes, yeah, we uh, need, it's a rezoning. We need to disclose any ex party communications we've had regarding this. Matter. Start to my left with Commissioner Harris. I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. I have none. Okay, there we go. All right, Commissioners, uh, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank all you, right. sir. Down. Uh, okay. The next case is uh, R14006. <clears throat> it's a zoning map amendment from A Agriculture to C2 Light Commercial. Uh, the applicants are uh, Jack, Barry, and Stephen DePriest. Uh, Barry is here today. Um, this is a request uh, by the DePriest to rezone a half acre next to their existing business. Uh, the half acre is located at 338 and 340 South Highway 17 East Palaka from agriculture to C2 so they can expand their business. Um, basically the uh, uh, land is actually, uh, future land use on the property is actually commercial now. It's just, it's state ag for whatever reason. Uh, the public hearing was held before the Planning Commission October 8th, 2014, and the Planning Commission unanimously recommended um, that the property be rezoned. Nobody appeared in opposition to the request. Barry's here today, but he's not wanting to be a public speaker, but he would answer questions if you have questions of him. <laughs> Mr. Barry, you have, uh, we'll open it up. You're good? I want to congratulate you. We don't hear of many businesses expanding these days, and uh, congratulations on your expansion, and we look forward to it. You guys keep a really nice business over there and a nice appeal. We appreciate all you do. Anybody else from the public? Hearing none, commissioners? So move approval of uh, zoning map amendment uh, from C1, I believe I'm stamped out here, to C2. Second. Okay. Ag agriculture. Yes, ex parte uh, communication starting on my left. I've Commission. had none. I've had none. Um, I did have a brief conversation with you one day in the driveway, so, and it was just about the expansion I just talked about. I've had none. I've had none. Okay. Let the record show. All right. What's your fancy, commissioners? He already made a motion. Made the motion you did. And who had a second? second? All right. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. DePriest. Yes, sir. Okay, next we'll turn number nine to Commissioner Rick Leary. Okay. Commissioner Leary. Thank right. you, Mr. County Chairman. Administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I only had one cup of coffee today. Right. It's showing. Well, previously, the board indicated that you wanted to. Uh, solicit some proposals from consultants who uh, specialized in providing legislative and governmental uh, services uh, for the uh, upcoming legislative session. We received two proposals, one from the uh, Southern Strategy Group and a second one from Bryant Miller Olive. Uh, we have reviewed the proposals and are suggesting to you that if you wish to pursue uh, engaging one of those companies that the uh, Southern Strategy Group has offered the uh, proposal that we would think is most advantageous to the county. Uh, that particular uh, company is offering <coughs> a fee of $3,000 per month and $500 per month for travel and expenses. So uh, our recommendation is to uh, authorize the engagement of that group uh, for providing legislative and governmental services for the upcoming legislative session and while they have offered their services for a 12-month period I believe that you could uh, uh, you could uh, terminate their services uh, on a 30-day notice so it's essentially a month 
month to month uh, agreement. Okay, thank you, Mr. Leary. Commissioners, uh, discussion? Commissioner Harris. No. I'm sorry, Ms. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she leaned uh, before you did. <laughs> I was impressed with their presentation, and I'm impressed with their successes in the area. And I think we need help. And um, the price is very reasonable. I think they said they gave us a break. And um, I very much would like to try them out. Okay, Commissioner Black. Mr. Administrator, what is our strategy for accountability um, as it relates to the return on the proposed investment? Um, obviously, there are some things <laughs> that Putnam County already yep. quote, have in the pipeline. How do we well, differentiate so that we know that they are we're getting the return? Well, of course, they <clears throat> purport to be able to secure funding for us that uh, we could not otherwise get. And uh, I think there's a number of different uh, fundings that we are able to secure for ourselves that I think we will probably secure again. Uh, so we would not want them to take credit for those fundings. Uh, I think we need to identify funding in a specific uh, uh, for specific projects that we would not in any way, shape, or form be able to get in any way uh, otherwise and task them with securing funding for that. Uh, one thing that comes to my mind uh, is funding for a specific uh, extension of, uh, say, a water line, uh, which would enable us to secure additional water customers, which we so desperately need. Uh, and. I've got a specific geographic area in mind that I would be happy to share with you at a later date uh, that would net the county some additional customers, additional revenue, and start relieving some of that financial squeeze that's on our uh, utility fund. Uh, but to task them with uh, uh, going after that particular amount, and I've asked Jones Evans, our consulting engineer, to, uh, to develop for us a cost estimate of, of extending that line from point A to point B uh, so that we can uh, uh, ask our consulting consultants to uh, begin to uh, go to work in the legislature to, to get money for us to, to get enough grant money to and I'm grant, talking about grant money, we can get loan money all day long for that line, but to get grant money to, to let us extend that line, uh, that's, that's the kind of money I think that we need to uh, task them with procuring for us that, uh, that would measure their success for, on our behalf. Thank you. Um, if I could elaborate on that a little bit. Um, so as far as debt relief on our existing uh, system, are they able to procure no, funding for that possibly I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's anything that I, I really don't think that's the kind of uh, success that we can expect them to get to have for us I don't I think if I think that we can this is for new yeah I think we can kind of get that debt relief in a way by getting grant money to add additional customers to relieve some of the financial stresses that currently exist on the system I mean and, and we can get we get debt relief in a circuitous fashion by adding more customers. Uh, and earlier in the workshop, the amount they were requesting monthly was was higher. Um, do you did when we put it out to bid? Did they come down on their own, or did we engage them to lower their fee? Well, they did. They did mention a higher fee, but I think when we put it in a competitive environment, that probably had a little something to do with it. Okay, uh, Commissioner Pelliser. Um, after reviewing Southern Strategies and their success that they've had with other counties and uh, relating to the size of our county versus the others that they've done, I, I felt like it was going to be money well spent if this board decided to uh, move forward with their uh, procuring their services. I, I so, so wholeheartedly support it. Mr. Chairman, in my former position, um, I did a lot of lobbying for our insurance industry, not only in Tallahassee but in Washington, D.C., um, this does not relieve us when hiring a group to, of our position to help them. We still need to be a lobbying uh, asset for them to go up there and sing our song along with them. It just helps us open doors that we possibly would not be able to open on our own and have their eyes and ears open where they can find money that's available for this county. And I think that this is going to be a tremendous asset for Putnam County. 
Putnam County. I would encourage us, though, as soon as we can possibly pass this, is to have a meeting with them and, and get our wish list together and the things that we really want to see happen here for the citizens of Putnam County. But I'm in favor of this, and I, I'm excited about this potential. I guess uh, I'm a little weary of the dollar amount, I have to admit. Uh, I would like to ask you fellow commissioners that in that meeting you just spoke of that if we could discuss that a little further with them to possibly a lower fee or at the very least a performance checkup at the end of that 12 month contract. Um, I just did a little bit of uh, inquiry with other f firms and I feel that they are the best and we need the best but I feel that they're a little bit high. So with that being said Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think that the checkup has to come before one year. I think the checkup has to be uh, four months, six months, uh, or whatever. And I think the administrator had mentioned. I don't know if that's possible. Let's ask the administrator if it's a year's contract. It's I think it comes at the end of the legislative that's session. Right. If, they, exactly if, they haven't, absolutely. if they haven't identified the, the, any additional funding beyond that, which we think we normally would procure for ourselves, I think the, I think the scorecard is in at that point. But I think that the the contract, the terminology, and the conditions or the covenants in the contract is basically what will either make us or break us. And so I guess that goes over to the attorney side of this equation to make sure that uh, everybody understands. It's not like you jump ship because you didn't get everything you wanted, but at the same time, where's the check and balance to make sure uh, everybody understands that we're not doing this because we can't afford it. We're doing it because we can't afford not to. Is it uh, uh, unreasonable to ask for quarterly checkups in a, a regular scheduled workshop meeting? I mean, we're just to invite somebody from the firm to come in and, and brief us or whatever you commissioners. I think the, I the legislative session should be the time I, I that, agree. that we uh, have that checkup and that they understand that that checkup can easily be a checkout. <laughs> Just for the record uh, about this company, um, the Putnam County School Board had procured them, and um, the school board was going to be happy with 500000 and they actually got the school board a million. I, so, look, I'm not questioning their ability. I just feel that well, I, think, I want some checks and balances. Well, like, we don't want to go in pessimistic as much as, you know, I mean, we want to be optimistic, but at the same time, I think at the end of the legislative session, they should, we should already have it scheduled. That Not this is the enough. meeting. If it's a party, fine. If it's a um, parting party, then we do what we have to do. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. All right, everybody satisfied with that? Okay, okay we'll entertain a motion. So move um, contracting with Southern Strategies as a uh, representative for Putnam County government. I second that. You don't want to use the word lobbyist? Lobbyist, put that in there, sorry. <laughs> I'll second Just that. Put it all all together. Right, we got a motion and a second to my right. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. I'll go with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Leary, appointments? Yeah, we, have, we listed uh, all the appointments that are going to be expiring by December the 31st, not because we expect you to make those today, but because we wanted you to begin to think about uh, perhaps making them in the next couple of meetings or so. Uh, I do want to call your attention to the uh, CDBG uh, Citizens Advisory Task Force. This is, uh, uh, you have in the past adv appointed a Citizens Advisory Task Force for CDBG purposes, but it has been an, a three-member task force. It has been uh, new regulations required to be expanded to five members, three of whom uh, must be from low and moderate income households, and we have to have that task force in, in place uh, prior to uh, filing an application for CDBG funding, which we expect that grant cycle to start uh, shortly after the first of the year, and the task force has to meet before your first public hearing. So uh, if at all possible, we do want to encourage you to make, uh, make those appointments before, the, uh, uh, before your Christmas break. Okay. Um, Mr. Leary, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Harris. Um, do, so each of us would appoint one, and do they need to reside in our district? Uh, for, for the CDBG? Yes. No, uh, the three, the three, uh, the, the, all five appointments would be, could be at large. Uh, two, two of those appointees 
have in the past been uh, Cynthia Asia and Alex McCoy, uh, both of whom have been very good representatives and certainly are eligible to be reappointed and could be newly and could be members of the newly constituted uh, CDBG. Uh, task force the, the other the three low moderate income persons can be at large appointees from made by any individual just they just have to meet certain income criteria and I think I provided you a copy of a, a form that they must execute uh, uh, it, which is an affidavit type form indicating that they do meet that low moderate income threshold um, I guess I had another question go ahead on uh, I think when we have uh, different boards to appoint to, it'd be good to have a description of how often they meet. When we call someone to ask, they're going to ask us. So um, some of these, like Better Place Plan, they meet quarterly. They do. And, uh, affordable housing, is that a quarterly meeting also? I believe that's a monthly meeting, isn't it? Is monthly? it monthly? Okay. I just think it'd be good at the top of each one if they just said how often they meet and um, just so that we can answer those okay. questions. Well, we can indicate that. Some of them are as needed, but we, oh. Even that would yeah. be good. Okay. Okay. All right. And I do have one appointment. I do too. So you go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, on the planning commission, I had appointed Erin Fortner as the at-large person before, and I called and she would like to continue. So I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Erin Fortner Second. upon the expiration of her time. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, concerning yes. Planning Commission, um, I also would like to reappoint Tom Williams. He has agreed to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tom Williams, thank you. Anybody else? I'm sorry, I moved it. I didn't catch it. Tom Williams. The second on the motion. Larry Harvey had the, the motion. I did not hear the second. You know, I didn't hear the second. Wasn't me. It wasn't one. That's why you didn't hear it. Okay. Second the motion. <laughs> All on the Okay, wait a minute. We need to go. Got to go. Nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tony. So Walton just seconded it. Now, maybe, should we revote again? Or? I'm sure. <laughs> no, we got it. Okay. We'll Thank blame you. this on uh, <coughs> Castleberry. This is his duty to listen for these things. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. Restate your motion, please, Mr. Harvey. I, I, I move we reappoint Tom Williams to the Planning Commission. Second. We have a second from Mr. Pellis there. And any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Well, we aye. have a motion to withdraw his prior motion. We didn't do that. Never mind. He's good. <laughs> All right. You heard it from him. Never mind. Okay. Can I? Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. I mean, I'd like to make a motion on the Zoning Board of Adjustments to reappoint Faith Sparkman. Okay. Where are we right here? Okay. Second. I have a motion on the floor. Second. We do have a second. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody else? Anything? Mr. Chairman, I have one more better place. I thought we had to do these today, so I was in a hurry to get mine done. Yeah, I'll say job well done. You're um, right ahead. Mr. Hogue, uh, on the Better Place Plan Oversight Committee, I make a motion that we uh, reappoint him. Second. Okay, we have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Mr. Chairman, <coughs> District 3 representative Better Place Plan, Tina Arendt. Uh, move for her reappointment. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we've got that one. Anything else? All right, I have one <coughs> for um, the at large parks and recreation, Miss Maria McLeod. Second. Okay. <laughs> um, at large. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Any others? Anything else? Ms. Area, hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Leary. Sure. All right. Uh, County Attorney, Mr. Russ Castleberry. We finally get to hear from you, sir. Nothing further. Okay. <laughs> Clerk of Courts, Mr. Tim Smith, right? We have no items. Okay. 
Thank you. For the good of the order. Yes, sir. If I could have the floor, please. You, you can have the floor. Um, as was brought up earlier, and uh, for those that are not aware, I will be brief. Um, Senator Thrasher was um, made president of that university up in the northwest part of the state. <laughs> um, and uh, thereby vacating his uh, seat and thereby creating a special election to be held uh, January 27th. Um, qualifying ends for that race uh, December the 1st. If there happens to be a Democratic uh, um, nominee, uh, that race would actually go out till April the 7th, according to Supervisor Elections Overturf. Uh, I'm again going to make a motion and ask this board for a straw ballot to be placed and bring this to the people. And uh, I want to hear their voice. I still want to hear their voice. And um, I think w one time before it was mentioned that we didn't have time to. Um, uh, get the wording right. Um, I think there's adequate time now with the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Board to, uh, to to come up with this terminology that we need to, to come up with this. Like I said, it's a straw ballot. It's nothing legal and binding that we have to take to the wall. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. I'll second that. We have a second. Discussion. Anybody? I'll start. Uh, tell me about the language. I, I think hear? that's um, that's open to us and the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Board. I certainly don't have all the answers, but uh, um, you can make it as simple as a one or two choices, a uh, um, possibility well, that's of... That's all fine, but what I would like to see, and this is just one commissioner, is if you're going to author this uh, straw ballot, I, wanted, I would like to see an example of what questions might be asked of the public concerning the landfill. I mean, is that um, fair? Um, yes. I mean, I feel like I'm going into this blindly. I'm just going to say I, I support it. I think it's important, but I really would. L I'm very concerned with the questions. I, I could be very. <coughs> I could be a lot more concerned if I was asking you for an ordinance or, or something that's going to be legal and binding. This is a straw ballot. It could be very simple as, do would you uh, like to resume negotiations with Republic Industries, or not? Or proceed on the path that well, we those are, are good examples but I <coughs> commissioners weigh in tell me what you think Mr. chairman I think your point is on point I think it's very important that uh, Commissioner Pelosia get with the administrator and with the um, county attorney um, our director uh, Gast and let's have language that cannot be uh, questionable in the minds of the individuals who will go and state their opinion. I think all of that is important. Uh, today, I certainly can support the concept, but the language, um, to me, can either make us or break us. And I think that we want to make sure. It's not about uh, trying to form a question for the citizens to uh, elaborate or determine this, that. Just move all the gray area, all of the the, the ambiguity, anything that would cause people to form opinions about the opinion we're seeking. I think that that is, is, is what's important. I, I commend Commissioner Pelosia for um, uh, wanting that, but I think that right now the citizens' uh, decisions is going to be based on how much relief they feel they will gain as a result of uh, voting one way or the other in a straw ballot. Commissioner Harris. Okay, I, I have been concerned about um, getting the word out. Look how much time the committee, the one before and the committee we have now, how much time they've spent educating themselves and looking at the different choices that they have, you know, and really studying it. And they had lots of paperwork and things to go through. So we have not done very well in educating the public about what it's all about and it's hard to get all those facts down. That's been the number one complaint, fair enough. I think so and the, the other thing is that um, we have decided to appoint this second committee to go ahead and look at it and make a recommendation to us. So aren't we kind of undermining them that we're looking for them to come back with something and then we ask the public before we ever get everything all together. It just seems like we can't make up our mind and we keep doing different Not things. I, maybe I should reword that a little bit. Um, I would like to see us 
give the charge to the Solid Waste Advisory Board of letting them come up with the, with the uh, wording or we can possibly assist them. I think we Would can, can we meet with them, uh, joint? council, jointly? We cannot. Yeah. In an advertised meeting. In an advertised meeting. Public we, or public yeah. notice meeting, yes. Yes, and come up with some of the wording. I'd be happy to, to, to spearhead this um, and see if we can come up with, with the terminology. Again, it's a free time that we can do this. We, it won't cost us a it. penny. I, I support your effort. I think that I'd like to see a question, but I, I really support you spearheading it. Sure, and bringing it it's to not the a committee problem. And then asking for our input also. So. Commissioner Flagg is uh, very wise and this thing could go uh, all the effort of the committee and the commission and everything we've been through can be lost if we don't word it right. And Mr. Chairman, there was a straw ballot that came in the mail sent out by the tax collector the other day too. Yes, sir. That has a... <laughs> You're a getting the calls, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Calls that was that. anything but straw. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's not permanent either. We need that word <clears throat> not out. See, there's so much, so many variables to this and Let's see what, what you can do, Commissioner Pellis. Well, well, Mr. Chairman, if we can uh, elaborate just a, a little bit further. I think that the language is so important that there needs to be language that is vetted by administration, legal counsel, and our director that is put on the table to us so that we're not building from zero because if you, it's enough to get the five of us <laughs> with some language and then if you're going to get the uh, the, the task force or the, uh, the, the advisory board uh, in, engaged in that. I just think that we have the resources for language if in fact this commission says let's, yes. let's do the language. I think that the experts ought to put the language out for us to deliberate on and tweak it rather right. than for us right. to get in a meeting and start from zero. I agree with uh, that. One, one thing that I definitely want to see in that language is I want it as simple as it can possibly be. I don't want it to look like one of these state Correct. statutes Correct. where it's a page and a half long, and by the time you get to the end, you forgot what you read but in the beginning. Look at Castleberry. Hold you it, you lean back a little bit and let Castleberry. No, that's not what I said. Uh, okay. I don't want a lot of uh, that lawyer mumbo jumbo there. <clears throat> we should. That's a legal term, isn't it? Mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I'll be happy to stay. Can't do that right now, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think you're going to get that luxury. Well, then you're probably going to get some mumbo jumbo. <laughs> So right. what I'm hearing now is that the consensus is, is that the uh, committee will be spearheaded by uh, Commissioner Pellis here, and those questions will come back to us a to question. be vetted. A question? It'd be more than one question. It should be answered. It should be quite a few different questions of what what direction does the citizens want to go? It'll in. be a question with multiple answers. Is the way I would term it. Okay, if you really want this commission to be thoroughly confused, you put several questions on one subject on a ballot, and we're going to have more confusion than we will ever be able to, uh, to deal with. I think that that's why I'm suggesting that we use the resources that we have to, I mean, everybody knows what we've gone through to get to where we are. We are indicating that we are not kicking the can further down the road, that we are going to be a decisive group. When it's all said and done, right. we still have to make the decision on behalf of our citizens. So I think what I'm hearing Commissioner Pellicia say is that we want a litmus test, you know, pretty much to gauge where they are. Because as long as we were in those hearings, we had the community telling us where to get off at as it relates to the proposal that was before us. Now we're hitting the exact opposite of that and telling us we're scoundrels and a whole bunch of other things because we didn't do it. And when we kept hearing no to privatization, no to regionalization, it was resounding. I mean, uh, 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 deaf people and blind people could, could get the message. But what I'm saying is we need to make sure that the language does not indicate that there is any Right. This uh, desire on the commission's part to lean one way or the other. Speak what you feel, and and again, it's non-binding, but it's it's like going to the doctor. Now you've got some lab results, and you can at least weigh in on it and right. figure out. I, agree. I think let, that's what I'm. Let hearing. me add another question. that's very important here. Is you've spoken to the supervisor of elections on a possible deadline for mm -hmm. ballot language. Mm -hmm. Uh, three what? weeks is what he tells me. Uh, they certainly can't mail out anything before December the first. Okay, now I know that you you want to oversee this, and uh, 
And that's if, if there's only Republicans in the race. If a Democrat gets in it, I we guess. could push it back to April the 7th. Exactly. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time. <clears throat> a little bit. Can, um, but we would have to do this by the 25th at our next meeting. Correct. I've got to get with the um, people of the Solid Waste Advisory Board and, and or whoever we decide is going to help compose this language. Okay. Uh, Russ, can we have some guidance here on the timeline and what you might need? I thought I was not involved in it. No, no, sir. You are very much involved. But what I'm hearing is you're going to get a input and suggestions from the committee that then some of us are going to massage and present to the board. Is that? That's what, uh, yes. That's, and not what, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you've got this amount of time that you need, we need information from the director, from our administrator, from our legal counsel with you as the only commission in this there, right? Because it's a committee. That information and language can be vetted through the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Board for some input. The final tweaking will come before us On the to make sure that the language is ready to be presented to the supervisor of elections. That will take, because again, if you try to do joint meetings and all of those things, those meetings have to be announced, noticed, all of that. And I think we can get it accomplished since you are the drum major here for this. You should be the one to meet with the administrative team and any consultants there, whether it's JEA or whomever uh, 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 there that has already been involved in the process and bring it back. I don't see where we could go wrong with that. I think we're good to go. But we would have to have it back here on the 25th. Okay, that's going to be Mr. Pelosi is About two challenge. weeks. I think we can pull that off. You, you can, can pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, Mr. Castleberry, right. Mr. Gast. All right, very good. How far along is the committee? Now, uh, what do you mean? They How, have, they have six months for their task. I, I don't think that we That's have to necessarily true. put this burden on them. They have a task that we gave them up to six months to work on. I understand. But certainly, they could have some input in this. Give them a time limit. Right, let's get some order. Give them a time limit. No. All right. So, well, I mean, now the, Mr. Pelosier's original suggestion was he was going to turf it off to the committee come up with at least the initial suggestions. Are we are we changing that? Mm -hmm. he, he won't meet guess the, in the essence, elections deadline. If in the does. essence of time, I'm guessing we're going to have to, okay. to, 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 to do it. But I, I've kind of wanted some of their input. We've been charged them with that duty. I was wanting some input. Can we have a special meeting that they're called to or a special time to get this so we've got time to get it in and time for the – They meet again. Uh, they meet Monday night, don't they? Monday night anyway. Monday okay, night. so why yeah. couldn't why couldn't we, Could. Mr. Gass, you give us some input there? Maybe tell us what they've well, talked about, or well, no? We'll be meeting this coming Monday at uh, five thirty. So you can have that as an agenda item. Yes, for their I can have that as an agenda you don't item need to be for discussion. In none of that. Yeah. And Mr. Haven, come on up where you can do and, your and you could bring us a report back on Tuesday, or get a report to me of what they came up with that night. So you that need to be there. I guess I can attend that. Can I yes, attend that? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. You can. But Mr. you could also send an email to them to go ahead and start thinking in that direction, couldn't you? I can. Yes. Okay. Good. There you okay. go. Would you do that? That's yes, good. I will. You're good. Thank you, Mr. Haven. Earlier in, in public, oh, I'm going to revert back to you because I'm just that. wondering why can't it just be a multiple choice? You know, you, you know, which would you like to see? us do with the Putnam County landfill. You know, we can do regionalization, we can transfer our garbage out, we can look for new technology, we can continue to do as we do. And, you know, make it real, real simple, let people decide. We agree with you, but we want the, the task force to weigh in, sir. Right. Yeah, that's, I hear, I'm hearing that. We want it okay. simple, but we hadn't decided yet. All right, You're right. but, <laughs> but it's something just simple, multiple choice, let people pick one of the three Options. I think that's We're best. We're going to end up picking multiple ones. Mr. Chairman. Yes. <laughs> we can put any multiple choice out that we want if the citizens do not have access to the consequences. That's why we are where we are now. Uh, when folk were saying no to the privatization and the regionalization, uh, I'm hearing now we didn't know what the consequences would be. Well, it was. It was presented. 
you know, what the downside was. And I think that at this particular point in time, if we're just giving them multiple choice and everybody's just speaking, you've got some folk that's out rallying the citizens, saying vote for this or vote against this, and then when it's all said and done, it comes right back to the five of us, mm -hmm. or as if all of us stack the deck for the votes. And I'm not willing for us to, us to do that. That's right. why anyone who has some input need to bring it through Commissioner Pellicier, since he's the drum major here, and we can move on. We only have, we had public comment, Mr. Haven, it's just, I can't open it back up for this. So. Um, I, I do have one other question, but, and maybe uh, Mr. Overturf can answer this. Um, you had mentioned, Commissioner Palacio, that if it was all Republicans, this uh, would be decided in January. Well, it'd, it'd be a, a Republican primary, just like you ran in August. Right, but the decision would come forth. But there's nothing saying a Democratic candidate won't come forward. Well, my question is, would would it be still a Republican primary in January, and then they would face off with a Democrat in April? Would that? Well, that that will be the normal scenario if there is other candidates. Um, but right now, the four names I've heard are all in one party. I'm not saying that that's in stone, of course, but. Uh, and qualifying is the first and second day of December. So the minute noon of December 2nd is over, we'll know if there's a January and an April or just a January. Well, my concern is if, if, if it comes down to be a Republican primary in January and they're gonna face a Democrat or some other candidate down the road, um, that kind of narrows the field to just the Republicans voting, doesn't it? It would and if there is other candidates. So not exactly everybody in the straw right. poll, we would, we would receive right. a total and my concern would be then, if that happens, then we need to push it out to a, a, a future date where and, the majority and, and of our citizens Walton can. and I have talked about that. If we knew right now that it would be April, then you've got plenty of time. If it is just one particular party, then it is January, and that'll be the end of it. There won't be another well, election after. Well, so we won't know yeah. for sure till December the 2nd. Right. This commissioner would like to see the majority have the say-so. And, you know, if, we, if it stays in January, then we'll... I, I would be very agreeable to keep it at that date. If it goes to April, I'd like to see it move to right. that date. I, absolutely, on the April date. But w w Democrats get to vote in the January election if there's if only it, Republicans. Right, just like that. they did. Okay. You know, okay. if everybody will get to vote if it's that. If okay, not, if I'm it's sorry. just Republicans and then there's a Democrat or right. an Independent, then it will be. You're right. It'll be just a primary only. Uh, just for Republicans, you know, and but if there's two Democrats, then there will be a primary for that also on the same day. So we just won't know until the second at noon. Okay. Right. Okay. So on the second at noon, you'll know whether you're going to have an April election or not. And if you're not, you're going to have one in January that's open to everybody. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. So this board is moving forward through Commissioner Pellicier with that January timeline. Yes, sir. And it looks like you, it's laid out real nice for you. We can do this. And, and a, in a perfect world, I would rather it goes in April, give us plenty of time to get the word out, you know, get a lot of dialogue going on it and, and get the people talking and knowing exactly all the facts about what, you know, what this brings. I think the word is already out and I also think that the decision that we have to make is going to have a direct impact on our next budget and I'm not in favor of letting it stretch out to April because we're going to be working on the budget and we're going to need more time than that. So I think we need to focus on January Keep it at January, regardless of who's Democrat, Republican, Independence, Libertarian, Green Party, no matter what party in it. Let's get the information that you feel we need and that all of us are agreeing to. Let's aim for January, team. That's going to be our best interest. That way, when our budget directors and everybody is coming together, they've got a better picture of what we're envisioning. Mr. Right. Leary, do you see a problem with the April date of being a budgetary issue? Um, as far as timeline, if, if it were to go to April, it may not go that. Maybe right now it looks like January, but do you see a problem if it did go to April? April 7th is uh, the date I have. Right. I think you ought to act the administrator. He's the one that that's, that's, that's Mr. Leary's. Yeah. That's who I directed that to. We won't be that deep into the budget at that point. Uh, you, you will have had, we will have probably have had a a preliminary meeting with the board in late March, but April probably won't present any monumental problems. Thank you. When you yes. think about the magnitude of what's happening at that landfill, 
I think in all fairness to Mr. Gass, that he needs to know before we get mid-year about what direction we're leaning toward. Because again, it's dollars that we're talking. We're talking taxpayers' dollars. The book does not stop with this referendum or this poll. It's much more that's got to happen as to how we interpret the results. And I think we need that extra time before, because again, this is going to consume a lot of our time dealing with the overall budget, but specifically the uh, progressive direction that this landfill is going in. So I'm pressing and asking that we, if we're going to do this, let's do it in January uh, and we'll, 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 we'll deal with the supervisor of elections as far as what we need to do to make sure that it's countywide. I just think we need to get it done and get it over. How much more publicity we need on this as far as every citizen? The citizens who did not come all during the, the year when we were having the public hearings, they got word from Linda Myers, tax collector, the other day. So everybody should know by now. Okay. Um, Commissioner Flagg, let me uh, clarify here. Mm -hmm. So in January, what you're saying, if there is a Republican primary to decide the uh, – Senate seat, we of course we go to uh, to vote then. But if not, you're saying hold a special election no. in January. No. Okay, I want to make sure because it sounded tilted that does way. The Senate, does the Senate seat cover this entire county? Entire county. Okay, and again, if all of the polling locations are going to be open, then the other individuals that are not quote if it's a closed primary, then those other individuals. No, no, no. I, They'll, it's open if it's a closed primary. I mean, it's not a closed primary. If it's a one-party primary, it's open to everybody. What I'm saying, though, if, if that is not – you're concerned for going into the budget year next year without a uh, definitive uh, opinion of the public. Uh, how do you solve that? If, this, if, it, if we do have a Democratic candidate in the election, it's pushed to April. How do you get your information? But there's still a primary. No. Well, there, but it would only be for the Republican candidates. The Democrat yeah, don't guy get the would, whole population. He or she would go automatically to April, so there wouldn't be any voting on those prime. I mean, in those parties, it's only whichever party has the primary. But if we have a Putnam County referendum on there, they will not have that particular race on it. But it still can be a countywide election. All the it, polling places it, are going to be open. It could be. I just wouldn't recommend that because you if you've got. 21,000 Democrats registered and 8,000 independents that would not I have a real reason issue, to come vote except for that one point. And I think whereas, that one point would bring know, them out. So, Commissioner Flagg, uh, maybe. there's a – I know people get tangled up, and Mr. Overturf can, I'm sure, uh, appreciate this. People get so tangled up on those ballots, and if they see nothing but Republicans on there, oh, I'm a Democrat, I don't even get to vote. Well, they do get to vote. And I think we would, if, if possible, I would like to see it go all the way to April. But if there's not a Democratic candidate, has there even been one rumored yet? Not as of no rumor. So, this so morning. we probably I'm not are dealing there's with not, a January date, whether we like it or not. Yeah. So, but I think that, that if you take it all the way to April, if we have a Democratic opponent, you, you, you're you going to get more people out that if they didn't vote in the primary, they'll definitely be there in the general. Well, just a matter of, of history the last time Putnam County had one and it wasn't the whole county but it was in 2011 and they had 10 percent or less for the whole vote period so you gotta and I've already talked to the governor's office about maybe making some changes but I don't know whether they'll let us or not but you know if we have 10 percent we'll be happy and that's sad that is, uh, that is terrible know, uh, of course it's a four county race you know it's not just us it's St. John's uh, Flagler and part of Volusia County besides us so uh, you know, we got to think about that part. The other part I would mention to you is on wording, and maybe Mr. Castleberry can help on this uh, with his knowledge. If it was a regular binding resolution, it has to be a yes or no by law. I don't know if it's just a straw poll, whether, you know, you can put it, like, as they said, maybe multiple choice or things uh, like uh, that. You want to keep it simple as you can, but uh, I'm just bringing that up so that maybe you all can help when you're talking about wording whether or not that applies, whether it has to be a yes or no, uh, you know, for a non-binding resolution type thing. I'll look. I, I don't know the answer. Okay. I don't know that we've ever done one or in a long time. Thank you, Mr. Overturf. I'm glad you were here today. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the good of the order? 
Well, we have to vote on this. We have a motion. Oh, that's right. You have a motion for and second. Um, so, what is the motion? Yeah. Tell us all. <laughs> to, <laughs> to to hold the straw ballot at the next regularly scheduled um, January twenty seventh election. If it is, is, is what the motion is exactly. As I understand, we'll have to have this language in to Mr. Overturf by December the second at the latest. Okay. So, so by your we, vote. Why don't, Mr. Mr. Chairman, why don't we just agree that we're going to do it, and then we can vote on all of that, the language and all of that in the next meeting. On the 25th. I, I agree. Okay, just gonna, but uh, the only part he, he's, 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 we're giving, we're, we're giving consent or by consensus or by majority vote that we agree to the okay. straw ballot. And then let me make sure your motion included the possibility of two different election dates. No, we're going to deal with that in our next meeting. Yeah, we'll yeah, it's going to make it right. easier okay. for us. Just want to clarify that. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll deal with the deadline date for sure of the 27th of January or the 7th of April okay. at the next meeting. All right. There's a motion on the floor uh, and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. No. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I do have something for the good no. of the order. <laughs> okay. One no. One no? Yeah. Okay. I think I it's just going to be very confusing. And, uh, okay. At our last transfer, Wait, before you do that, I want to address Ms. Ruckelwitz and others that raised their hand during that conversation. After the meeting, if you would get with Mr. Fellas here, if you have uh, some suggestions for questions and that sort of thing, I just, uh, that part is not set out for public comment. And uh, Mr. Haven had asked during public comment to address us at that time. So I was honoring his request. Okay, Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the last transportation meeting, I brought up Ashley Lake Plantation Golf Cart Community. I have an agenda item here uh, that didn't make it on it. As you remember, the Transportation Committee, we agreed to put this on today's meeting if I was able to go out and get the signatures that were required. Out of 170 residents, we got over 60 people that signed a petition that they wanted a golf cart community. And a lot of these people walked their community, didn't take their golf carts out because of some problems that were there um, but I would like for us to vote on this today to staff has recommended this I can pass this down to you if you'd like to see it um, this is what was delivered to me today uh, our department head has approved it uh, the sheriff's department is in agreement with it and I'd like to make Ashley Lake Plantation a golf cart community so I would like to move that sure. um, okay we, we, we have a motion on the floor in a second. Hearing none, let's do a uh, discussion. Or is dying for lack of a second. But um. Okay. What? Why did? Yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Harris. I asked to ask for questions. Well, I was just. Did you? Were you able to see everyone to get? You only got sixty, and everyone got asks. Uh, Commissioner Harris, there's no pr uh, procedure for anybody to have to sign. In the past, we've never asked anybody. This is a first. And in the short time period that we were given, we felt like 60 people out of 100 was really a good showing on that. Okay, but what I, what I was asking, did you have many people that were against it? No, ma'am. Or you just saw 60 people in that 60 sign? We ran sign? out of time. We could have continued on. We had nobody against it, so. Okay, that's what I wanted to understand. Commissioner Flack. Mr. Chairman, I thought that in the workshop meeting that all we requested was a letter from the association so that it, it was their issue and it was them requesting to us, not the responsibility of the commissioner having to go out and get petition signed. I thought that was clear in the meeting that they were going to make the request as the association versus having to, because we're not interested in the percentage because the association, those people pay dues to the association and as long as the association was saying this is what they wanted, that they would be the applicant rather than the petition route. Mr. Harvey, um, why, why, yeah, can't we follow My that? understanding was that from you, Commissioner Flagg, was to go out and canvas the area because you didn't want anybody to come up with any no's. And I, I believe our, uh, our minutes will show that, but I'll, I'll check it out. But I brought, I brought what I was told to go get. And but I, I apologize if it was, if. I was misunderstood. Again, it was not a directive from flag. It was more of us setting a procedure. If we're talking about 
a community that does have an association, if we were just talking about a subdivision, that would be a totally different process, which might would require the methodology that you are employing. But my thoughts are when there is an association, the absence of not having the officers of the association giving us an official document, then what leg do we have to stand on if this thing, if the neighbors change, then, you know, that would create a problem. Well, I think yeah, Mr. Talk, the Homeowners Association officers have signed the petition, and that was what I told them. I could have gotten a letter, a simple one page letter from Homeowners Association. I understood that I was to get petitions signed. Um, but this is a new thing because this board has never requested that before. There is no procedure or policy on doing this. And I, I checked that out before I even started this process. Let, so Let me clarify that, if I could. The, Mr. Kopovic does have a guideline for establishing these communities yes. that has to do with safety. Um, and that's pretty much it. But I have to defend that, that we've never dealt with a homeowners association. And they have a board, right, that could cast yes. a vote. And that, that's they what did. we're asking yeah. for. Mr. Leary. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, my recollection of what transpired at the Transportation Committee meeting in and, and this is by way of explanation as to why this is not on the agenda, is that the subject was brought up. Uh, Mrs. Harris asked, was there petitions? The answer was there is no petitions. Uh, so the, it evolved into the discussion that in order to relieve someone of going from house to house and soliciting petitions that what you would except was minutes from the homeowners association reflecting that the association as a body was in favor of the designation of a golf cart community and when we got minutes substantiating that the homeowners association was in favor of that that that's what would be that's when the issue would be put on the agenda and we didn't have those minutes from the homeowners association indicating that body's support of the uh, designation, so that's why it's not on the agenda. And so when they meet and produce that set of minutes, and you put you on You know, the Mr. Agenda. Leary, since we're all hung up on policy and procedures around here, I would really like for us to have one concerning this, because as you well know, the sheriff is really active in liking this, this type of situation to help out the citizens of Putnam County. Um, I'm sorry that I got confused. I did the best job I could in the short time I had. I did ask for it to be on this agenda at that meeting, but I tell you what, I will go back out and I will get the Homeowners Association, not only to, that they signed it, but now they'll send a letter to us requesting that. I bet um, Larry would make, just for me, I, if they would vote on it. And yeah. it okay, let's make this clear. What do you want them to do? Because I really want to go out there with a, a clear board vote. A you want a board, a board vote. And a board vote. I, you have, I don't want to, Feel, you from the feel like I'm not supporting of this, yeah, because I am, and I know what it means as far as law enforcement and the safety of the neighborhood and this sort of thing. It's a plus, and I do support it, but I feel we're circumventing the board. The board the has signed this because that's what I told them to do. I did not tell them to get a letter. I wasn't, I didn't. Well, that's fine, but if, I, if what I heard in the transportation much, meeting was a petition. That's all. So, okay. I will get a board vote from the Homeowners Association. Is that all we need? To fit, put this to bed. Well, I was thinking that they would have a meeting and it would be discussed yeah. with they, the they, public that lives there. They had a meeting and I requested they sign the petition. I did not get the direction from them to do what you're asking me to do today, but I will. It's all about process and procedure. And again, this is not in any way, shape, form, or fashion to try to reflect adversely on but Commissioner <laughs> Harvey. I think, again, in the meeting, my understanding was precise. In their regular meeting with this disc on their agenda, they would discuss it just like any other uh, board meeting or advisory meeting would be. They would have open discussion. They would vote on it, and it would be a part of their regular minutes, and that's all was needed for staff uh, who would be preparing this to come uh, before this board would be, and I think everybody here is saying, yay, let's do it. It's going to be for the benefit of the, com the neighborhood. It's going to be for the benefit of public safety and so forth and so on. But at the same time, it was just maybe not clear in the meeting what the expectation was uh, there. But that association should be dealing directly with the department. 
getting that information. It's on the agenda and this commission taking action on it. And in the future, could we have a policy and procedure on this item? I think it's over. It's over. It's time to do it. I think it is. Yeah. No, sir. Heard. Right now, the only policy and procedure is, is our public works director goes out, inspects the area, and make a recommendation, which he did today. So we did follow procedures as of they are current right now. Okay. Well, it's good, but I agree we've never had a homeowners association involved either. So we probably need to play catch up here, and we appreciate your efforts, Mr. Thank Harvey, you. to get us there. Okay. Anything else to come before the board this morning? If not, I entertain a motion so for <laughs> second. second. Okay. We're out of here. Thank you, everybody.